Hello, my awesome friends. It's such a pleasure to be with you here again talking about comping. And in today's episode, we're going a little bit deeper into the concept of rhythm and timing. Just remember, watch the first video, and then this will make a lot more sense. We're looking at how to max out our left hands when we accompany singers, other musicians, and so on. And the very first session was an introduction to comping and basic chord voicing. I gave you a challenge last time we met of being able to play all the major seventh chords with your left hand. Did you practice it? Let's find out how much work you did. I'm going to give you a rhythm. And I'm going to ask you to follow me on your keyboard and let's see how well you did with it. So C major seventh, C sharp major seventh, follow me, D, E flat major seventh, E major seventh, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, B flat, Awesome. Let's go back to the key of C, but this time we're going to add a little bit of fun to it. I'm going to put a bass line down there, and I'm going to ask you to just play a combination of C, major 7th, like that. Now I want you to put some rhythm into it. version of C major 7th, like this. Or down here. All with the left hand. Now go to F. F major 7th. Like that. All right. All left hand. Now we're going to sprinkle something over here. And just stop venturing out a bit. sharp C major C sharp major back to C let's try that C sharp major seventh sounds a bit off but it goes can you do a pentatonic scale on this Pentatonic major scale on F, which is you can pull it down. Then you divvy it up after a while, back to C.
how you get into the swing of the rhythm, okay? You gotta practice these rhythms and comp it. Even if all you're doing is just moving from, you know, like a, let's go to minor now. Let's go to C minor, C minor seven. of the rhythm. That's what it's about. And then you can add even one note up here. It gives the illusion that everything else is moving. So even though I'm not doing, it almost sounds as if I am. It's a cheap trick. dynamic, move them around, but get that rhythmic, that rhythmic thing. Now the cool thing about playing on the key of C is it helps you see, <laughs> no pun intended, everything happening around. So I'm on the key of C minor right now, right? But I don't like playing straight minors, so I may play a C minor seven. But I don't like being redundant, so I may take the C over here, take it out completely, and replace it with a D up here. And that makes it a C minor ninth. This is the flat three, the five, the flat seven, and the nine. See? And you can put... Let's take it up a notch. This shape also doubles as E flat major seventh, which is why I said the major seventh are important. I don't even need to play it like this. I can play the major seventh like this. It gives it a bit of a more dampened feel. Or I could just play it that way. Now, you want to create that illusion of motion, so you can see that. Well, what's that? That was an E major seventh. I just went up half a tone, so I could create a illusion of motion by doing. For you jazz heads, it sounds kind of exciting, right? Half steps, major seventh. You could do it here as well. Back. All I did was go to that's an E major seventh. The major seventh, they're really helpful. So watch this major seventh, major seventh. Still on the major seventh. This is now G sharp major seventh. Back to E flat major seventh, but it's on the key of C minor, if you get what I mean. It's very helpful to know your major seventh chords all over. is all about. Some experimentation as well. Let's bring this up here so you can see a little bit more of what I'm doing up here. So up here, let's play with pentatonic, C minor pentatonic. Here you go. So I want you to try this. the left hand, you're going to play that minor 
ninth thing with an E flat major seventh like that. So let's see if you can avoid hitting this finger. Alright, let's go. Two, three, go. That's it for today. I hope that made sense and gave you some further context for your comping. See you in the next video.